another video. Today's topic is a question that will vary hugely depending on who you talk to and that is when is the right time to tell your date about your disability? This topic and the answer to this question does vary on lots of different factors. So first of all, I would say that if we wasn't in this lockdown that we are in the moment uh, and we were meeting more people face to face, then it would probably be earlier on because it would naturally come up in the conversation, especially if you've got a physical visible disability as opposed to an invisible one. But the conversations that you might have around like an arranging a date or perhaps when it gets a little bit more serious, like staying over at their house, means that these conversations would come up earlier. But at the moment, or perhaps in general, lots of people are dating online. And because of that, um, it's up to the person to decide when is the right time to bring up the topic of your disability. And that varies on so many things. Ideally, and the first thing I want to talk about is saying as soon as possible. And let's talk about why this is the ideal situation. Firstly, because I think it helps you um, make clear about who you are. And there's so many aspects to who you are, whether that's your job, your hobbies, your pet, your house, um, the lifestyle that you lead. And your condition or your disability is part of that. So I just feel like it's natural to talk about your life and not feel as if you've got to hide aspects of it, because that's when you can start to get anxious and panicking. And that stage where you meet somebody that you like and you're talking should just be relaxed and happy. And I feel that if you put so much pressure on yourself not to say anything, then it kind of ruins that stage. Um, the second reason is it also just shows which partner or which potential date is going to be worth sticking around and having a relationship with. If you kind of lay all your cards on the table straight away um, and say, like, this is who I am, this is what I live with, um, it means that if they, for some reason, and hopefully this will be a really small minority, but if they're not interested or it puts them off, and I really do use that in inverted commas because it is their loss, not yours, um, then it means that you haven't wasted months and months of emotional uh, conversation and kind of getting attached to somebody. But I would say in the vast majority of cases, it actually proves who is the right partner and who is going to be there for you. Because if they're cool with it and they understand, then that shows that they're the one for you and that you can dedicate some time to kind of hopefully dating them and build up a relationship. It is really important to kind of be open. But at the same time, I think especially if you're new to being diagnosed, take it at your own pace and don't feel that you need to have it in like your dating bio or that you need to talk about it immediately. Um, especially when you're kind of chatting to lots of different people. Um, if you feel that you just want to hold something back, don't rush yourself and make yourself really anxious about putting it out there straight away if you're not comfortable the whole point of dating is that you slowly get to know somebody. So if you feel that you'd rather talk about another aspect of yourself um, and finally talk about it a little bit later on, then I think that's absolutely fine as well. However, I would say what you don't want to be doing is leaving it so long that you're eventually hiding the condition or the disability that you live with. Um, the reason for this is that uh, sometimes it can take a long time for you to get your head around something and I've certainly been in denial about my condition and the way it impacts my life in the past so unfortunately I feel if you leave it too long and you're kind of hiding that part of you you can put yourself in dangerous situations whether that's like not wanting to take your medication in front of a partner or um I have IBD, so people are not wanting to go to the toilet when they're at their partner's house um, or even missing like doctor's appointments. So I just think you have to be careful. There's nothing wrong with holding a little bit back and waiting until you're confident. But at the same time, um, you don't want to leave it so long that you're essentially kind of hiding that part of you and putting yourself in a vulnerable situation where you can't be yourself on a day or um, in a relationship. Because if you can't be yourself, then I just don't see the point of it. I 
I thought I would just finish by mentioning a few ways that you could broach that conversation. Um, and that will depend entirely on you and your personality and kind of how you work. I personally have found that if people have questions, sometimes having like a resource, like a blog or an article can just be really useful just to be like, oh, just to let you know I have Crohn's disease. If you're not sure what that is, because some people aren't, then here's a little link that you might want to read about. But I just thought I'd let you know. So sometimes kind of taking the pressure off and having um, a little resource uh, can really help because then it stops them asking you so many questions, which can be a little bit draining um, and can be kind of embarrassing if you're if you don't want to necessarily answer those questions but let's look at it the other side it can also be a little bit awkward for the person receiving the information if they want to ask questions but they don't want to offend you or put you off or show you that they're not interested they kind of just want to learn more so it can be really helpful to have like some blogs or articles or even just like social media pages and kind of just share a few links to let them know what life is like for you it can be really helpful to explain it in tangible uh, ways so for example rather than me saying I've got Crohn's disease I personally just say you know I've got Crohn's disease and it's an autoimmune disease uh, which means uh, my body attacks my digestive tract so I have to take a lot of different medication and this means that sometimes I might need to go to the toilet more often I have to be careful of what I eat so sometimes just explaining about how your life is just a little bit different can be really really helpful um, and when you get to the stage perhaps a little bit later on in the relationship or when you've kind of just gone from dating to committing to each other um, it can be really helpful to spell out how they can help you in practical ways so you know it's not a big deal we don't even spend ages talking about this but if I can pick the restaurant that we go out to or if you can be aware of this this and this and that kind of thing just to give them a heads up really about what your life is like so they can kind of adapt and hopefully have a life with you and um, I hope those tips have been useful as I say it's such a personal thing but when it comes down to it I do think the sooner is the better. When you're feeling comfortable and confident, do give it a try. And just remember that, you know, online dating can be tricky and there's all sorts of reasons that things don't work out. So don't blame your condition or your disability for it. Um, as I say, having that conversation is just to make sure that the person you're dating or, you know, hoping to have a relationship with um, can support you and is compatible with you. It's nothing about to be ashamed of or to feel guilty about or to hide away anyway. I hope that's been useful and I'll speak to you next time.